Hello and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench we have a beautiful French watch, a Yema, and I call it I call it the the French Rolex because yeah you can see like there is some uh, similarities with uh, with a Rolex uh, watch. Uh, there is a rotating bezel, so you can see the hands as well. Some uh, similarity even in a in a color scheme of the bezel. Yeah, it reminds you a bit of uh, of a Rolex GMT, even if this watch is not a GMT one. Okay, so we did some quick check. It looks like the watch is uh, working. Our is moving. There is a hacking second. And when we put it on a time grapher, we can see the result is losing 48, 50 seconds a day and the amplitude is very low. So I think it desperately needs a, a service. So let's open the watch and see what we find inside. Okay, so we have a automatic movement. We can see that there is a rotor. And it was written actually on a case back. It's uh, ETA movement 2836-2. Uh, so we saw in this movement there is quite some complications. There is a date, the day, and the uh, hacking second. So we see when we disassemble the movement how, how this translates uh, in parts and how it works. Yeah? Okay, so now I will release the dial with these clamps. Okay, all good. So we saw the watch on a, on a time grapher, it was not such a good result. So yeah, I think the mechanism is probably, it's not a very old watch, it's probably from the from the 80s or early 2000s, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the, the movement, yeah, it's probably in good shape because it's working, but yeah, it, it was probably not maintained. I even don't know if the, this watch had the service in its uh, lifetime, so that would be interesting to see. Okay, we start to remove the, the calendar. Uh, mechanism so we remove the the date and the, the the day ring remove the springs for the calendar mechanisms and all the parts so we can see this plate there and all that's the hour wheel the minute wheel that's the intermediate wheel from the calendar mechanism you can see that's the 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 jumping that's for the quick set uh, quick set uh, date that's a calendar wheel and there is this arm which is difficult. Oof, that's not good. You can see that it was quite tight. It was like a bit clamp on the, on the, on a part. I use some force and they fly a bit away. That's uh, that's not really good. But yeah, I managed to find uh, find the part. So let's move back to the other side. And first, we are going to remove this uh, this big rotor. And starting this assembling the the assembly for the winding uh, automatic winding mechanism. So I remove the three scre uh, two screws, sorry, which are blue. So that's an easy, easy reminder that these screws are for the automatic uh, mechanism. I will disassemble that, that later. Okay, I remove the balance assembly. Very, uh, very delicate part, so I like to get it out of the way uh, at the beginning. So for sure, that we, like that, we don't damage the air spring. And you can see this movement was beating quite uh, quite high, like the the frequency was at twenty eight thousand, and the balance. You see when the balance is working, is is working left and right quite quickly. So that's a big difference, like compared to other model I restore on my channel, like vintage, uh, like or let's say all the movement they did not have such a high frequency. Some 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 have, but it was like uh, rarer if you want to find like high frequency movement. Okay, so that's a click. I remove the click spring. We have the uh, ratchet wheel, like a nice, uh, nice gold color. Checking if there is play with the balance assembly, but it looks good. There is no no play between uh, the main the main spring uh, the main spring assembly and the main plate. Okay, so now we are going to remove. The, the train of wheel, but first I need to remove this uh, this plate. Just checking if the jewels are in good shape, if there is anything wrong, but I, so far I did not see anything. So just removing the train of wheel there. And the last part is this uh, main, main spring barrel bridge. Okay, you can see some marks there, some grease on on some spots, but it's it's not too bad, and that's the system for the hacking second. 
Okay, so let's move back on, uh, on the other side. I need to disassemble the, the keyless work. Just remove the parts, the setting lever spring, checking if everything is okay. It's quite a complicated part because there is like a few parts in integrated in one on this one. So, and we have the clutch and the winding pinion at last. Okay, I just put back the balance wheel on the, on the movement because we are going to put that in a in washing machine if you want. So yeah, that's a safe place to keep the balance assembly. Okay, so now let's go through the sub assembly. So that's a automatic assembly. You can see that uh, you have like four wheels and that's a standard wheels and you have two reversing wheels to make sure like when the water is turning both ways that your watch is winding and obviously you only wind in one way so you need to have a bit of engineering there to make sure that uh, when the rotor is uh, turning both ways is winding the watch okay and in there you can see that this part was a bit stuck so there is some dried up oil or grease there okay now we are going to remove the main spring first we need to open the, the barrel Okay, now I'm removing the main spring slowly. You can see it's wind. So I just need to go very slowly because yeah, there is quite a lot of tension on this part and everything came loose quite nicely. So now I'm going to put all the parts in, uh, in a cleaning basket and that's going to go through a, a cleaning uh, cycle. That's quite a lot of parts because you see this part, like I said, has few complications. So yeah, it's a bit more parts than usual. Okay, so the cleaning is done in three stages. So first, you go through a cleaning product, and after we go through the same cycle with two rinsing solution. And the last part, we will dry the we will dry the parts. Okay, so now it went through the cleaning solution. Okay, so while the the parts are cleaning, if you like the the video, please like and subscribe. I already have uh, some video on my channel, but there will be many more to come. So I'm not, I'm doing uh, this restoration, it's an hobby, so I want to share with you my passion. If you have any questions or if you have any remarks on, uh, on the way I do, please, it's, uh, it's the purpose of this channel is to share the, the knowledge and share about uh, a passion which is uh, about watches. So please like and subscribe and click on the bell icon because there will be many more videos to come. Okay, so now we are going to start the reassembly. So first I, I uh, will wind the, the mainspring. So for this I will use a, a, a kit from Bergen to specially made to, to wind mainspring. If you want any, uh, I, I put in a, in a comment some of the tools that I use on my video. Obviously I don't put all, all the tools because it's an hobby where, yeah, it's quite a costly hobby because you need a lot of tools. So if you are like, uh, if you like tools, if you are a tool junkie, yeah, that's you, you will be a, the right hobby for you, yeah. Okay, so now I want the, the mainspring and now I'm going to put some grease before I introduce the, the mainspring in the barrel. This is a special, uh, a special grease, a P125, which is specially for automatic uh, movement. And now with the with the tool I'm going to press the spring and you can see the spring went right in the barrel. Here we go, I put the barrel arbor in the middle. I, I put some oil a bit before. So basically there is different type of oil that you need to put on, on a watch. There is uh, some end grease as well. So for example on these movements, so I said it's an 882836. If you go on uh, online you will be able to find uh, oil charts that tell you how to assemble the, the movement, but as well how to oil and grease the movement properly with which type of oil you need to put and where you need to put it and with the amount that you need to put it as well. So that's a, a very important thing if you want to have your movement uh, running perfectly. Okay, so now the next step will be to uh, oil the jewels which are on the, on the balance assembly. So here I'm getting the top one. You, you saw I, I removed this uh, spring on the top, which has like a kind of, uh, of a clover shape. 
So I, I clean it with a bit of Rodico. This went already through the cleaning machine, but I clean it again and I put it in, I treat it in Epilam. So this is this product there. I leave it like for a few seconds and this product will help to do some oil retention at the right spot. The, the oil will not slip over the part. It will stay concentrated in the spot where you put it. So if you want to have a watch that run properly and for a long time, you need to have some of the part like that that need to be treated with Epilam. So I put a drop of oil in the middle and I got a lot of trouble with putting this, this spring and actually two of the springs were already broken. So I bought some new, uh, you see it's like some Novodiac, it's like diff, uh, a certain type of spring. And actually there is a tool which is like a screwdriver with the right shape to turn this clover uh, spring in place. So I bought the replacement part and this tool and it went, it went in very easily. Because with a tweezers, with a couple of tweezers, it was really difficult to make, to, to put in place. And uh, I, I broke uh, two of them. So yeah, that's not, that's not good. But yeah, lesson learned. You see, an, an extra tool that you need for the, for the job. So now I have the, the tools to put this uh, special spring in place. So here we go. Now I just lubricated the other side. And now I will put back this spring that I was just talking about and using this tool, just turning it around a, a quarter of a turn to lock it in place. Okay, so now we just lubricated everything and we are going to start the, the assembly. Just first putting the main spring and this, uh, this wheel and you can see this wheel is going under the main, the main spring. And now we are going to assemble the rest of the uh, train of wheel. So you need to go in a certain order because you see like you have parts that go on top of each other. So yeah, that's a, that's a trick. Just put a bit of uh, grease there, the oil, sorry, for the center, for the center wheel where you have the second, uh, second pivot. Okay, so now just to make sure everything is located in, uh, in their respective jewels. First, I will put the main spring, um, assembly of the, the main spring uh, plate. Okay, just secure it with like a couple of screws. Just put a bit of oil there because there is a contact which is metal against metal. Always very important. And like I said, you will find this information on the oil chart, like on this uh, more modern movement. And if you don't have an oil chart, yeah, there, there is some basic rules that you need to apply and you can find them online as well. Okay, so now you see, I'm trying to align all the wheels in the joules and you can see there, when it's done, I'm just turning the balance, uh, the main spring, sorry, the, the main spring barrel assembly, and all the wheels are turning together. So it means everything is in the right place. So we can carry on after with putting the screws and securing everything down. Okay, so now putting the spring, you see using a, using a, a plastic uh, tip and a tweezer, just to make sure it doesn't jump. And we are going to put the, the click. Okay, you can see that as well. It's a different design if you compare to some of my other video on, uh, on older mechanism. It's a bit more elaborate that you, what you can see. The, the, the results is exactly the same. Yeah, it's a click that all the power and for the main spring not to unwind. But, uh, yeah, the design is uh, a bit more complicated compared to what you can see on the older movement. Okay, I put a, Ratchet wheel with the screw, and we are done on on this side. We we'll come back later with uh, with the rest, but now we are going to focus on the dial side with the keyless work first. So put a bit of grease there, which is a, a high viscosity grease, uh, 9501 from Moebius, on the on the winding pinion, and uh, the, I put the clutch. I put the same grease there on the winding stem. And I'm just introducing the winding stem through the parts. Okay, carry on putting some uh, some some parts, oiling oiling all the pivot point where we are going to put wheels or where the parts are going to come in contact with uh, with each other. Like I said the, previously in other videos, the, the purpose of the oil and the grease is to limit the friction and reduce the wear as well of the parts. Uh, which obviously most of the parts here are, are metal parts, 
So it's to reduce the wear of the parts to extend the longevity of, uh, of your watch. And for the friction, is to get a, a more accurate watch uh, for, for the timekeeping. Okay, so there I'm putting the cannon pinion, which is uh, with this wheel. Again, oiling the pivot points, putting the minute wheel. And here we have the setting lever spring put on the top. And you can see this big part as well as another spring, which act as a, as a yoke spring. So it's a, a multi-purpose multi part. And, we, and here you can see when we pull on the, on, the, on the stem, we have like three position and we see the three position later what they do. Okay, so we, we are done with the keyless fork. So now we can focus on the other side where we are going to put the pallet fork. Just make sure it's aligned on this bottom jewel. And when it is, we can put this, uh, this plate on top with a jewel. You can see the jewel is this uh, purple color uh, stone, which is synthetic stone. And it's, not, uh, it's, not, it's not a ruby stone. It's, uh, it's a synthetic stone. I give it a bit of a wine. Now we have and just checking, and you can see the pallet fork. Click, click, perfect. It's working. So now I'm uh, oiling with uh, automatic oiler. I'm oiling the stone from the from the pallet fork. That's very important as well because it comes in contact with the escape wheel. And now the moment of truth is we are going to put the balance assembly. So I just put it on the bottom jewel and see if we can get everything aligned. And beam, it's starting straight away. Perfect. And you can see the, the frequency of the movement is very fast. It's beating very fast. So that's what I was talking before, like at the beginning, it's a, a very high frequency movement. Okay, so now the, the timekeeping element of the mechanism is done. So we can focus on the complications, which are the, the calendar with the day and the date. So again, I'm oiling all the pivot point. I'm putting this uh, big plate, this big uh, uh, wheel, sorry. So I'm oiling everything as per the, uh, uh, as per the oil chart. And you see, you see I, removed the, I removed the wheels because I figured out that yeah, I was needing to put this huge spring before, and there is a, a, a sequence you need to put this part in order, in a certain order, which is actually I found quite tricky. So I don't know if there is a trick to assemble these parts. So this one needs to be pulled like it's like with a bit of uh, friction. And now I'm oiling the spring with one, and you see I'm releasing it slowly wh while putting the parts at the same time. So that was quite tricky actually. So the parts are in. I have these big plates on top of it that will come and keep everything in, in place. Secure it with this, uh, with this screw. And I think we are looking pretty good for the main parts of the, of the calendar mechanism. So this is uh, this spring, which are spring for the day and the date. So now we have all the main parts I'm putting the date uh, ring around. Okay, so let's check. We have the quick side date here. We see it's working when we are in intermediate position. And wow, you see the jump at midnight. So when we set it at midnight, the jump is very sudden. Yeah, it come like uh, very quickly. And here I'm putting the date and these little clips that come and keep everything in place. Okay, let's check. So we have the quick sight date for the date and the day, perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to assemble the automatic. So this um, V105 is a solution that I use for the reversing wheel. That is to oil the, the reversing wheel from your automatic mechanism. So I keep them in a solution for a few seconds and now I put them on a piece of paper uh, I will dry them to, to remove uh, any excess uh, of the solution. And I will start the reassembly. So oiling the pivot point as always and putting the parts in the correct order. So you can see the reversing wheel there and we have an intermediate wheel. I need to be uh, placed on, uh, on, on, on this pivot point. 
And now we have to do the same on the top side. You can see these four little jewels there, where we need to align all the pivot points from the, from the automatic uh, mechanism. And when it's done, we secure that with the screw. And we oil everything. So here I'm uh, oiling with some uh, 9104. And we can uh, put this assembly on the, on the mechanism and put the two tinted screws, like uh, black or almost uh, normally they are blue, like they are very dark, this one. Okay, so we are done with, uh, with the other side. I'm gonna put uh, the dial back. Okay, I close the clamp to secure the dial in place. Fine, oh, you saw it's just changed the hour, so it means that the time, sorry, I'm in the date and the day, so it means it's just midnight. So now we align all the hands to midnight. So first our hands that I'm installing with this tool. And you can see the similarity with Rolex, like you have the, the Mercedes style hand. Now I'm gonna put the minute. Same trick, I'm going to align it to midnight. Press it with uh, this Orotech tool. I'm just checking the jumping. Oh, perfect. It's just jump like two minutes before midnight. That's pretty good. Like uh, normally it's like 15 minutes, 15 minutes after, before and after. I think the Rolex standard is like two or three minutes before or after. So we are pretty close there. Just giving a quick clean to the hand and the dial. So now that the movement and the dial is done, let's focus on the, on the case. I'm going to remove this bezel and see what we can find below the bezel. Remove, like this is acting as a spring, so that's like what makes the, the bezel click. It's a unidirectional bezel, so it means you can turn it only one way, like on all good uh, diver watch. And look at this, this, this is disgusting. Like there is a lot of, uh, a lot of particle inside, I don't know, probably from, uh, from dead skin or, or dirt. And you can see on my paper, that's quite, quite a lot. So I clean everything as I could with like a wooden stick, remove the old uh, gasket, and I put all of that uh, after in, um, in an ultrasonic machine. There I'm removing the, the crystal, which is scratch. So I will replace the crystal. You can see the crystal is quite scratched. And here is a new one that I bought with uh, on Cousin. And here we go, you see, after the part is clean, I'm installing, I'm installing the new crystal with my press and look at the state of the parts. They look not new, but almost. So obviously the bezel is uh, a bit faded, but I think it gives quite a lot of uh, charm to the watch. I, I really like this, uh, this faded bezel, but now everything is clean. Everything is rotating properly. So that's good. And we can put the case on top of the movement. And look at this, everything is, uh, is perfectly clean. We are going to grease this, uh, the little O-ring, which is a ring that goes uh, where, where, where the crown and the stem is coming, going through. So this, this is a model with a screw down crown. So that's some added security for, for diving or when you are in water. There we go, the ring is in place, perfect. Now I can put the, the winding stem with the crown. Put this plastic, that's uh, the spacer, which keeps the movement in place. And now we're gonna arrive at the moment of truth. We are quite close if the watch is uh, running properly. Running, we know it's running, but we don't know if it's running well or not yet. So first, the last part, the rotor for the automatic system. You can see the movement is beating, beating. Putting a bit of oil on the bearing, greasing the, the gasket, which uh, you need to do like it help uh, prevent like water and uh, yeah, your gasket will be much more efficient if it's uh, properly greased. So you need to insert the, the gasket on a groove. And that's it. Basically, we we are done. Just need to close uh, the case back, and we're gonna see if this watch is uh, is running properly or not. First, so let's demagnetize the watch and see the result. As you can see, the watch is the result is quite good. Yeah, actually, the bit error is very low at 0 0.1. The rate is only losing a few seconds a day, and the amplitude is very high. So 
I'm quite pleased with the restoration of this watch. So if you really like the video, please give it a like and uh, I see you on my next restoration and I leave you with uh, some images of the finished product. So see you next time. Bye.